the test matches got underway, the West Indies batsmen soon found out, just as the song said, the Aussie pacemen were not much fun. I can remember one, one occasion where we had uh, Lawrence Rowe, who I always felt was one of the coolest individuals that you could find whilst batting at the crease. And he used to whistle little things like uh, the games that people play and things like that. And I'm at the other end and I'm looking at my hero and I could see Tom was rushing in. And, Tom was letting everything fly. So I walked up to the wicket and I said, um, which was uh, commonly known then, Yaga, why, why are you not whistling like the games that people play anymore? He said, no, you cannot do that when you're facing this guy, Jeff Thompson, because you can hardly see where the ball is coming from, sometimes between his legs. And he said, whenever it rips, there's enough time, he says, for you to whistle anything. And caught brilliantly. Marsh. Rod Marsh taking a wonderful catch. Jeff Thompson, to me, was the, the biggest difference in that series. He was a, a physical threat uh, to the team, uh, to the batsmen. Um, he bowled at fearsome pace and, and was really extremely hostile. Of course, he had Dennis Liddy at the other end, an outstanding fast bowler, where Thompson was absolutely sheer pace, bunks, hostility. This guy was dangerous, I thought, that, and, he, and he was much stronger than than we expected. I'd say probably he didn't realize his strength and, and his stamina. He, he, was, he would remove batters when you, you know, when you think they're settled. He'd get, you know, and he made that break, he made the breakthrough, and then Dennis Lilly would come and do the rest, clean it up. It's always um, a picture in my mind, that 75, 76 series, I can still see those wickets, and I can still see Tomo spreading eagle and just letting fly. Yes, I, I think that was a a great baptism. This is what I think. And I'll put that um, particular period down to how I myself approached uh, cricket in the future. I felt, wow, if you could go through this and come through this, which was like a war, well, any little battle you could achieve, you know, and uh, I felt reasonably comfortable after that. And I think this is what it, um, uh, I needed as an individual at that time. The 1975-76 series was a triumph for Greg Chappell. Taking over the leadership from brother Ian, Greg scored a century in each innings of his first test as Australian captain in Brisbane. He went on to amass 702 runs in the series at an average of 117 and led Australia to a crushing 5-1 victory in the series. Australia was now the undisputed world champion of test cricket. The reason we won was we had the best pace attack um, and you know, Dennis and uh, Tomo were the, uh, the leaders of the, the pace attack. Uh, we had Max Walker and Gary Gilmore in, in that series. Australia's success with the four-pronged pace attack would make a lasting impression on Clive Lloyd and his West Indian team. The standard then was set by the Australians. If you have four fast bowlers and they're the best bowlers you have, play them. And uh, the West Indies were fortunate then in that period right after 75-76 where Andy Roberts and Michael Holding first really established themselves. And then right after that, a rash of fast bowlers, young fast bowlers came through, so that not only were four being played simultaneously, but you had probably four others waiting in the wings. With a batting lineup loaded with talent and a fearsome pace attack, the West Indies would come to dominate world cricket for the next 20 years. Spell him. 